Hello geometry students, my name is Jamie Amy and this video will start our discussion on chapter 2, Introduction to Reasoning and Proofs. Starting with section 2.1, title is Perimeter, Circumference, and Area. Alright, so on the screen here we have four different shapes that you guys should be um, rather familiar with. So I want you to test yourself. I want you to pause this video and write down, if you know it, the uh, formula for the perimeter of a square and the area of a square. I want you to write down the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle and the area of a rectangle. Write down the formula for the perimeter of a triangle and the area of a triangle. And last, write down the formula for the, well, for a circle we don't call a perimeter, it has a special name called the circumference of a circle and the area of a circle. Okay, so test yourself by pausing this video and seeing how many of those eight formulas you can write down. Welcome back, let's see how you did. Okay, I have to erase this so that when I write the nicer ones up there, this won't be in the way. Okay, check your own work. If you wrote down that the perimeter is four times the length of one side, you got it right, and the area is the length of a side squared, then you got the formulas for a square correct. For a rectangle, if you wrote that the perimeter is two lengths plus two widths, you got it right. And if you wrote that the area is length times width, you got that right as well. If you used base and height, or base and altitude, that's fine too. Just different variables to represent um, the parts of a rectangle. Okay, for triangle, if you wrote the perimeter equals A plus B plus C, you are correct. It's kind of specific to this triangle right here. That'd be one side length plus the other side length plus the last side length. And if you wrote one half the length of the base times the length of the height for the area, you got that right. For the circle, circumference equals 2 pi r. If you put pi d, that's fine too because 2 times r is the diameter. So you could have put pi d. Those are equivalent. Oh, I wrote it right there. <laughs> And if for area, you wrote pi r squared, then you got that right as well. All right, if you missed any of these eight formulas, um, make sure you review them. Oh, that's not right. Okay, so let's use those formulas to get through this example. The Botany Club members are designing a rectangular garden for the courtyard of your school. They plan to place a red border on the outside of the path. How much of the red material will they need? Okay, well, looking at the figure there, what is the name of that shape? If you said rectangle, you're right. And now, is that red part the perimeter or the area of that rectangle? And if you said perimeter, then you got that right as well. So looking back, uh, one slide back, we're going to be using this formula right here because our shape is a rectangle and we're talking about the perimeter of it. So two lengths plus two widths. All right, so we have two variables to plug in, length and width. Uh, they give us a lot of measurements here, but they actually didn't give us the length or the width, but they give us everything that we need to know to figure it out. So I'm just going to take this 4, that's the width of the sidewalk all the way around, and I'm going to add it here and here. Now that's going to give me a visual on this entire side. That would be uh, 24 feet. And then adding it here and here, just to again give me a visual on the length of the entire side, that would be 30 feet. So we're going to use 24 and 30 as our length and our width. 
So 230s plus 224s gives us 108 linear feet. Part B asks how much material we will need to pave the pathway. All right, to pave the pathway. So first of all, look at the pathway and figure out what shape you believe that is. Mm, I would say it's a rectangle, but then it's got a rectangle cut out of the middle of it. It's like a rectangle with a rectangle cut out of it, like this, and then a rectangle is cut out of the middle. So to pave it, we just need to pave this much here. Well, area follows the rules of addition and subtraction. So what we can do is find the area of the large rectangle, and then we can use subtraction because we know that we don't need to pave that smaller rectangle in between. Okay, so to do that, We're going to set up the area of the path as being the area inside the red border minus the area of the garden. The area inside the red border is 24 times 30, the 24 from here, the 30 from here. And so what this 30 times 24 calculates for us is the all, everything on the inside, everything that I'm shading here. So it's gonna be too much, right? We don't need that much. So we do the 24 times the 30, but then we don't wanna waste our money on um, extra material to pave the pathway. So now we're going to subtract out this inner part here Oh, well, my highlighter is not working very well. Let me try a different pen. And we're going to subtract out this area here because we don't need to spend the money on that surface area for paving. And that surface area, it's a rectangle, and it is 16 by 22. The labels are there. If I put them here closer, that might make it more obvious for you. So that is where the 16 times 22 comes from. And that gives us 368 and it's square feet this time. So it's important when you're shopping for materials to know if you're shopping for linear feet or if you're shopping for square feet. For the perimeter here, we would need 108 linear feet. So you'd wanna check the pricing according to linear feet. And for this one here, we would need a product that would be priced per square foot. So they would need 368 square feet of the paving material and 108 feet of the red material. Okay, some quick math based off only knowing a few measurements and we can go shopping for our supplies. All right, what is the circumference of each circle in terms of pi and to the nearest tenth? What is the area in terms of pi? All right, so we're being asked to find three different things right now. Circumference in terms of pi. Circumference again to the nearest tenth. And then area in terms of pi. So three things for each circle. So let's start with our formula for the circumference of a circle, two pi r. And this particular circle has a radius of four centimeters. So we plug in four for r and we're asked to give the answer in terms of pi first. So do the two times the four, but don't use a calculator or anything to hit times and a pi key or times 3.14. If they ask you to leave it in terms of pi, then we leave it in terms of pi. So we end up with eight pi, and that would be linear centimeters. So you don't see it, but there's an implied exponent of one here for linear units. Okay, and that's because circumference is measured in linear units. It's kind of weird, it's like, well, that's a circle, how could that be linear units? But if you cut the circle right here, it would, and it would then lay out to be a line like that. So linear units. Okay, next they want that circumference to the nearest 10th. So pick up your 
calculator, whatever you're using, and you'll want to type in 8, and then you want to find the pi key. Mine on my TI-84 is... above the up caret. So it's on the right hand column above the up caret and then hit enter. Rounding that to the nearest tenth is approximately 25.1 centimeters. Okay, that's two of our answers for this first circle. Next thing they want from us is the area. So we're gonna use pi r squared, substituting four for our radius. Now they want this one in terms of pi only, so do your four squared, which is 16, but leave it times pi. And now we're talking square centimeters, and that is because area, it's not calculating or measuring that length around, but rather the plane on the inside, which has um, two dimensions, so it's square centimeters. All right, why don't you try the next one? Pause this video and try that next one now. Oh, if you need a little help getting started, um, we have a diameter equal to 16. So you can use the diameter in the calculations if you want to. You may also want to look at it in, uh, as half of it. It's radius, eight meters, either way. Okay, pause this video now and give that a try. Welcome back, grade your own work. For the circumference, we could use pi times diameter, so that's 16 pi meters, and that would be approximately 50.3 meters linear, circumference linear. Surface area is pi r squared, so we plug in the eight for the radius this time. Squaring the eight, leaving it in terms of pi, gives us 64 pi, and that's square meters. All right. Let's try this one. What is the perimeter of triangle EFG? So we've got a picture of it there in red. And they also uh, we're also being asked to find the area of that triangle EFG. Okay, so let's start with um, finding the side lengths. So I'm gonna find the length from E to F first. One way to do that is just, uh, it's a horizontal, I'm sorry, it's a vertical line in the rectangular coordinate system. So you could just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's eight units. You can do that for horizontal and vertical lines, but not diagonal lines. Um, or you can calculate it. You can take uh, the Y coordinate, six, right there. That's where this six came from. And we do minus sign to find the distance between, and then the negative two, so the two Y coordinates. And the last thing we have to make sure to do is take the absolute value of that result because we are interested in the distance between those two points. So that would give us uh, positive eight and then the absolute value of eight is eight. All right, so we know one side length. Why don't you try to find um, the side length GF? If you came up with six, you got it right. You could have uh, counted one, two, three, four, five, six, that works. Or you can do your X coordinates. And we're using X coordinates this time because it's the horizontal line and the horizontal axis is X versus uh, EF. That first one we did was a vertical line. The vertical line is Y. Okay, so we have the three from here, minus sign, the negative three from here, and the absolute value of the whole thing. So we're interested in the positive length between the two points, and that gives us absolute value of six, which is six. Okay, the third side is not quite as easy to find. We can't just count it, but what we can do is apply the distance formula that we learned. So we take the sum Remember the plus sign goes in the middle of the differences. That's where these two minus signs came from. Squared. 
the sum of the differences squared. Now we're using this positive 3 as our x sub 1 and this negative 3 as our x sub 2. That's where you get the positive 3 and the negative 3 from. And then we have our 6 as our y sub 1 and our negative 2 as our y sub 2. That's where the 6 and the negative 2 came from. All right, so try that arithmetic really carefully while I erase this. Make sure to follow the order of operations. Okay, if you got 6 squared plus 8 squared, giving us 36 plus 64, which is 100, rooting that gives us 10. Then you got it right. That's the length of our third side of our triangle. Turns out that this is a Pythagorean triple. It's a right triangle. It's the 3, 4, 5, but it's the second multiple, 6, 8, 10. Okay, so now that we have the side lengths, we can find the perimeter and the area. So perimeter first is the side length plus the other side length plus the third side length. So 8 plus 6 plus 10 is 24. Perimeter is in linear units. We're measuring this linear distance. Something you can measure with a straight edge. Area next is 1 half the base times the height. Now once you determine your base, your height has to follow from that. The orientation of this triangle right here, I would go ahead and use 6 as the base. And if 6 is the base, from that base right there, going 90 degrees up, that's how you have to measure the height, would be 8. If you twisted your screen and you made 8 the base, that'd be fine. 6 would be the height. You could also twist the screen so much that you make 10 the base. Make this hypotenuse right here um, parallel with the ground. That's fine. You can use 10 as the base, but then your height's going to be a little bit trickier. You have to measure straight up from there to the point, so it would have to be like this. It would be the altitude right there. But the orientation is at 6 and 8 seem to make sense. And if we do that arithmetic correctly, we get 24 square units. It's kind of interesting that the perimeter could be 24 linear units and the area would be 24 square units. Um, it's, it's also nice and informative or a good way for us to remember that this 24 and this 24 are not the same. They're quite different things. This 24 in linear units is if you're standing right here, it would you would have to walk 24 of whatever the unit is to get all the way around the outside. Versus the 24 square units, those are actual little squares, little one by ones. Like that's a square unit and that one and that one. Can you see in the figure I'm filling it up? Every one of these is a square unit. It's quite different than taking steps. It's two-dimensional. So if we were to count how many of these squares it took to fill this triangle up, we would get 24. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And then we got to piece together some over here, like 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, maybe 24, something like that. It would take 24 little squares or square units to fill up this triangle. Alright, let's find the area of this rectangular banner. Uh, it says that we want to make a rectangular banner and we want it to be five feet in length and two and a half feet in width. So we want it to be five feet in length and two and a half feet in width. How many yards? Uh-oh, switch the units on us. How many yards do we need to buy to the nearest tenth? So you know your space. You, you're, you know you want it to be five by two and a half. Then you go to the fabric store or online and you find that it's all measured in yards. Okay, so how many yards do you need? You're going to convert the dimensions of the banner to yards. So we're going to take our length, that was the five feet, and we're going to multiply it by one yard over three feet. 
And this is completely legal because one yard and three feet are the same thing. You're always allowed to multiply by anything divided by itself. As long as they're equal on top and bottom, that'll equal one. You're always allowed to multiply by one. It doesn't change the value, it just changes the units. So that being said, if you multiply by one yard over three feet, what happens, the reason that's so useful to us is because the feet cancel out, leaving us with the unit that we desire. So it'd be five over three yards. Try the same thing for your two and a half feet now. You might want to switch it to um, maybe a mixed number. So it'd be, it'd be five halves. Take your five halves in feet, multiply it by one yard over three feet. If you do that correctly, the feet cancel out and you're left with the unit that you want, which is yards. And it looks like we've got five as our numerator, two times three is six as our denominator. Okay, so now we have, I can erase our old measurements. Let's just get rid of those guys. We wanna look at those measurements in yards instead. So here, this is five over three yards, and here we have five over six yards. Now you go to the fabric store, and you can find the area of that really simply, or simply by multiplying length times width. So that's five thirds times five six. Remember your rules of multiplying fractions. You don't need a common denominator or anything like that. That's addition and subtraction. You just multiply the top, multiply the bottom, and then reduce if possible, so 25 over 18, that means that we need to buy 1.4 square yards of material. So 20, if you're wondering where that 1.4 come from, on your calculator do 24, or you can do long division. Uh, I'm sorry, 25. 25 divided by 18, and you get, it's um, approximately 1.38, I'll just finish that off with a nine. All right, and that will conclude our discussion on section 2.1. My name is Jamie Amy, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time for a video on section 2.2.